Hey there, today I have six tips that I wanna share with you in regards to bringing your baby home from the NICU. Number one, make sure that you have your pediatrician lined up. My suggestion is to make a consultation, be it the phone or in person, and just make sure that um, this pediatrician will serve you and your baby um, all across the board, everything that you need. Um, I think that it's very important to interview um, and just get a feel for what their office um, specializes in. Yes, there are pediatricians, but some um, have had uh, patients who are premature. Make sure to schedule the appointment one to two days following the baby's discharge. Usually this is done, um, it's coordinated between the social worker and the case manager, one of the two, and uh, your baby's nurse should have a conversation with you about this. Number two, I would suggest taking a CPR first aid class. For us, our CPR class was conducted by the NICU. Um, it was about maybe a couple of weeks before our son's discharge, and it was very helpful um, for us to, you know, kind of refresh um, on just the basic um, life-saving tools that everyone should know, especially when they have a little baby. So that's very important. You can check with your NICU and see if they offer that class, um, or you can either you know go online and maybe you know Google search and see where um, you can take a first aid and a CPR class. Also, something very important to note: if you do not have a landline telephone, um, it's probably a good time to get one. Um, something that we did learn in the CPR class was that when we call 911 on our cell phones, it's directed to the highway patrol. It's not directed to um, the local police station or fire station um, where they will dispatch a, a paramedic or a fire uh, truck out to you. But if you call from the landline, um, you will get the nearest uh, you know, police station uh, or dispatch. So that was something that we learned that was very important um, because we had no idea. I mean, we all have cell phones and you know, in an emergency, you're just gonna pick up the, the phone and dial 911, but you want to make sure that um, you dial from a landline so that that um, fire truck um, ambulance can get to you quickly and swiftly. Number three, sleeping arrangements. It is very vital to um, have a conversation with your spouse, with your partner, um, in regards to where your child is gonna sleep. Um, for us, we had, uh, Jackson has his own room. However, because he was on oxygen and monitors, and you know, with him just being, you know, micro preemie, we wanted him to be close to us. So, we had a halo bassinet right on the side of, uh, on my side of the bed, and he did not like the bassinet. So, we had to go with a backup plan, um, which was the pack and play uh, sleep yard, and it was perfect. We put it at the foot of our bed, and um, it was just what worked best for us, but we had a plan in place. Um, you know, have a, have a plan A, have a plan B. Um, you know, you don't wanna necessarily have the baby sleeping in, you know, a little, um, uh, a swing or anything like that. You want them to be lying flat on their backs, um, just how they were, you know, in the NICU, but something that's comfortable and safe. But I definitely think that it's something that you need to talk about and plan for ahead of time. Tip number four, stock up on hand soap, sanitizers, disinfectant spray, cleaning supplies, cleaning wipes, anything that you need to keep a clean household and keep uh, germs away. That's very, very important. Um, for us, we try to maintain a clean and sterile environment just as you know we did uh, when our son was in the NICU. Um, especially if you're bringing your baby home during cold and flu season. I think it's very, very important to wash your hands, you know, take off your clothes, um, you know, when you come home. You know, just kind of keep, um, try and keep the germs away as best as possible. The last thing you want to do is bring your baby home and then have to go back, you know, within a day or a week or a month because your baby has caught some nasty cold or virus of some sort. So, <clears throat> like I said, cleaning wipes, hand sanitizer, hand soap, disinfectant spray, and make sure that you change those clothes when you come in the house and put on something fresh, especially if you're gonna be around the baby. Um, number five, um, you'll probably want to keep the baby indoors um, for a little bit. So my suggestion is to plan ahead, <clears throat> 
whether you have errands to do, um, you know, try to keep the baby inside. Um, if you do have to take the baby out, you know, cover the baby. Um, what worked well for us um, for seven long weeks, yes, we kept Jackson pretty much in isolation with the exception of his weekly doctor's appointments. Um, what we did was my husband and I took turns. So, you know, if I needed to go do something. We just kind of worked around my husband's schedule and, you know, my schedule was pretty much just all Jackson, but um, I would try and get all my errands done in one shot so that I wouldn't have to go in and out, in and out, and the same with him. Um, and it worked out really well for us. It was a challenge, obviously, but we um, managed to try to, you know, get all of our errands done at one time, come home, and uh, switch off. So we really worked as a team to make sure that, um, you know, we had everything we need. And, you know, it was a little bit tough uh, being in isolation for so long, but we knew that it was what Jackson needed and we would do anything uh, for him in the best interest of him. So and lastly, don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself a little grace. You've been through the NICU journey, you've been through the roller coaster of emotions, and you finally made it home with your beautiful baby. This is not the time to beat yourself up. It's a time to enjoy being home and just kind of find your groove, you know, whether you stick to the NICU schedule for a couple of weeks or a month, or whether you decide to just do your own thing. Give yourself time to adjust. Give the baby time to adjust. It's a new environment for the baby. They've been, you know, in a, in a hospital with noises and sounds and strange faces and um, in an incubator and now they're home. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to adjust and you just have to be patient with yourself. You have to be patient with the baby and just trust and know that you got this. You're doing the best that you can. Your baby has fought to come home with you and all they wanna do is be loved. So some, day, some days you might have to cry with them. Some days you might not get it right. Some days you might feel like you dropped the ball. But at the end of the day, you are their parent. You are doing the best that you can. And they wouldn't have sent your baby home if number one, they weren't healthy and stable enough. And number two, if they didn't trust that you could take care of this baby and help the baby thrive. So I just want to, um, to leave you with that and know that um, their support, if you need some encouragement, if you need some uh, a listening ear, whatever it is that you need, I'm here for you. So I just wanted to share those six tips with you. And if you would like to see um, more, a little bit elaborated, um, you can go on my website, miraclewife.com, and I have the six tips listed there.